it is a high place that the mind goes when you meditate you meditate the meditation has to be so specific you have to meditate on the goodness of god do you really know what that means when we deal with the goodness of god it means that he's always in a beneficial thought process towards you that's what he desires to advance enhance increase upgrade prosper to bring success happiness to bring comfort he's the comforter remember what the lord talked about the holy ghost being the comforter many people don't recognize the financial godship of the lord the financial kingship how he's a financial god he he said to Haggai the prophet the silver and gold is mine he had the prophet echo it to the people the silver and the gold is mine he's a financially minded god supernatural money is simply when you have let the lord carry out his financial vision towards your life that's what supernatural money is supernatural money is where you have given king jesus the leverage to show forth his glory in money the glory never operates without money never so when you in the glory realm your finances have to be transformed there's a salvation for your finances there's a deliverance for your finances there's a breakthrough for your finances there is wealth for your finances wealth is the financial salvation for every believer god has reserved harvests for you the, the lord has reserved provisional miracles for, for you and he uses provisional miracles to get you back on your feet because satan will knock you down financially and provisionally have you waste your time even when you get in wrong relationships with people you waste that portion of your life on nothing just think about it everybody that you ever met you waste your time on people when you make when you waste your time on people it affects your finances you know it's true you know it's true imagine all the people you done bought gifts for you in a relationship oh this is my boo this is my boo you know you done spent money you wasted money so satan sends people so that you would waste money you will lose money and you will be blind to the money that god wants you to have even when you take care of wrong people even when you sow seed into people jail bid you sow seed into people getting lawyers while they going to jail they, they broke their probation you you going you spending money for people's problems you waste money all the time and satan uses people places and things to intercept the financial plan of God for your life. The, the yoke is destroyed right now. The yoke is destroyed right now. All fi financial impartations of God will get to you now without any interruption, without any interjection, without any hindrances. When that financial power could flow in your life, the blessing of Abraham is the status of Abraham overriding your status. That means that how Abraham was very rich, you become very rich, and the process for that verily riches start happening. The process. You got you to gotta embrace and be excited about the process. Don't be anxious for money. God didn't create, it's not normal to be anxious for money. Saints, 
I was reading the text and the Lord showed something to me. It, it was so shocking to me because uh, you you familiar with the scripture where, where people often say it's hard for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And I, I did many teachers on that, right? But I read something that was shocking. After the Lord said that, then he said, it's hard. He, he, he repeated after that. And then he said, said this. He said, it's hard for a man that trusts in riches to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And saints, they got that in the word of God. It's hard for a man that trusts in riches. See, he had to clarify because he knew that people would take Okay, if you 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 have riches, you, it's hard for you to enter into the kingdom. So he clarified and said, "A man that trusts in riches, you don't never trust in money because then you'll have the spirit of mammon siphon to your life. You're invited to your life where money will make decisions for you, not the Holy Ghost. It won't be the Holy Ghost counsel. It'll be money's counsel." So you'll start making decisions based upon what money is saying to you. And see, the spirit of mammon is a demon that acts as if it has financial wisdom. So it'll start giving you ideas on how to handle money. Even when God tell you to sow the money, you'll have other plans. No, I need to fix it. I need to do this so I ain't going to sow it. That's what the spirit of mammon do does. So when the Bible said, you don't serve God and mammon. Mammon is actually a fallen angel. The spirit of mammon is a fallen angel. So you can't serve God and this fallen angel because this fallen angel is going to go against all of the financial wisdom of God with a false financial wisdom, account fit knowledge bootleg blessing advice and give you counsel that will cancel money coming why don't people see the lord as a big god have you really taken the time to think about this is the same god that brought the children of israel out with millions and billions of dollars that he he placed hyp hypnosis on the Egyptians and made them give the children of Israel who were their slaves, large money and large provision and large materials. Have you really taken the time to think about the, we the wealth transferring God? Have you taken the time to think about that there is money that God has stored up for me to take ownership of and as he's telling me to do this and do this, he's going to unveil this money to me. When you become born again, you receive a supernatural, apostolic, financial money life. Have, have you taken in the dwelling place that I have vehicles, I have houses, I have clothes, in the glory realm as i live in the glory realm i am going to possess everything in the glory realm saints there's some pain that you got to go through see uh for you to have a sexy body for you to have a sexy body you got to go through pain that's why some people body are not sexy <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, if, listen, listen, listen to me. Listen to me real quick. <laughs> listen, to me. listen to me. Listen to me real quick. <laughs> in order, <laughs> in order, in order for you to have a, in order for you to have a sexy body, you got to go through. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.
that's that's why that's why we don't <laughs> that's why we don't got <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, that's why, that's why, <laughs> that's why we don't, that's why we don't, <laughs> for you to, for you to have, for, for you to, for you to have a sexy body, for you to have a sexy body, you got to go through some pain. <laughs> That's why we don't have a lot of people with sexy bodies. Cause they don't want <laughs> they don't want to go through no pain. Well <laughs> well for you to <laughs> for you to have the finances that God intended you to enjoy, you gotta go through some pain. You, you have to exercise honor. That means that you have to edify somebody else on earth with money. You got to sow into them as they feed you the word of the Lord, the wisdom of God. You have to make them your financial priority. And when you sow into them, you can't just sow into them because it's the right thing to do. You have to take time with the Lord before you even sow a seed into them and meditate on what you're doing and let the Holy Spirit minister to you personally in your one-on-one -on -one so that you can know that the seed is forming your finances. The seed is forming your health, your pleasures, your joy, your peace, your provisions, that there are transactional miracles in the seed, that you're exchanging the level of life that you're in today for the level of life that you've been created to enjoy and experience and taste and see. You have to take the time with the Holy Ghost before you sow seed to think about what you're doing. Don't just sow because you say, okay, this is the right thing to do. I'm honoring my man. No, 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 no. You need to have a talk with the Lord in the spirit so that he could bring to your brain what this seed is accomplishing. Because each seed accomplishes something different. Some seeds are for your soul because Satan has desired to sift you like wheat in the next phase of your journey. Some seeds is God literally bringing a spirit of repentance. You start turning away from stuff that you have engaged. It's a spirit of loyalty. The Holy Ghost is realigning you to be loyal, accountable, transparent, realistic, truthful. that you'll no longer be a snake, a serpent, a trickster, a liar, decisive, or indecisive. So you have to let the Holy Spirit minister to you because when you're in the meditation of the word and you're spending time with the Holy Ghost, he will show you. I'm telling you to sow this thousand dollar seed because there's about to be a tornado come through your place and I'm going to use this seed to preserve you while everybody else get hit. I'm just giving you an example. There's about to be a flood and everybody gonna lose their house, they're gonna lose their car, they're gonna lose their job, they're gonna lose stuff, but I'm going to protect everything that pertains to you. I'm telling you, this is what happens when you're sowing. Remember what Ecclesiastes 11 say, you don't know what evil shall be upon the earth. There's about to be a virus that comes. And there's about to be sickness that comes, but I'm gonna make sure that your immune system is supernatural. I'm gonna make sure that I place power inside of you, that your body won't be able to collect that illness. When you're you're sowing specific seeds, the Holy Ghost will give you amounts because the amount is connected to the activity of favor that he's going to attach to it. The amount
Now, because the Holy Ghost deal with numbers. Remember, I just did a teaching to you about the number zero. I never hear nobody teach on no number zero. I, I told you zero, zero, zero. I never hear nobody in the history of my life teach on no zero, zero, zero. I told you about four, four, four. I told you about numbers. I'm telling you that numbers, because see, I'm turning 31 years old next Monday. And I, I'm, I'm telling you something. I was in a basketball tournament. And in the basketball tournament, I won 31. 31. I'm turning 31. I'm turning 31. I was in a basketball tournament. I won 31 games, but I lost 13 games. 13 is 31 backwards, is it not? That was my record. I won 31. I lost 13. Now, I was saying something to somebody the other day, and I was saying, oh, yeah, I was talking to Juan. I was telling him that God will defeat everybody. It's not just Satan that defeats saints. God defeat his people because defeating you will manifest what's in your heart. You need to lose sometimes. Winning is not always divine. If you're always winning, you don't know what's in you. That's why when people start to lose, they start manifesting as a devil. They didn't know there was a devil. You need to be defeated. God will defeat you. So I had 13 losses and I had 31 victories. But you look at the, look at the sequence of the numbers. 31 is the age I'm turning. 13 is 31 backwards. So, so now I was at a place the other day and they gave me a number 31. When I looked at the number, it was 31 on there. So, so the Holy Spirit speak through numbers. Like everything that I'm seeing now is in 31. Everything I'm seeing now is in 31. So when the Holy Spirit is having you sow seed, he has you see numbers. If you play the numbers, it's like playing lottery. But there's a definite jackpot in Jesus. When you play this physical world lottery, there's a possibility you're going to lose. A 90%, a 98% possibility that you're going to lose. Because what a lot of people don't know in lottery, and, and can I say this publicly? Yeah, yeah, I'm going to say it. Uh, what people don't know about the lottery is that they on purpose be having the wrong numbers for a time. Because they want people to keep on sowing money until they get a large amount of money so think about it they on purpose be having you know when they be having a big amount of numbers they on purpose have no numbers to win people don't know that but the prophet know that so so you know sometimes they be like somebody still haven't played the right numbers there is no right numbers they're having pe people keep on sowing money so they can build up financially and all the money is being given because the person trying to play numbers that ain't even in existence. See? So just think about it. The jackpot been doing this for years. You think that nobody won the numbers yet. Maybe I got a chance. Maybe I got a chance. No, there is no numbers to play. No way. If you pick 5, 21, 5, 8. Somebody pick 7, 8, 92, 3. Somebody pick 3, 4, 5, 28. There's no numbers. They haven't even hit no numbers to win. So everybody is playing numbers like maybe I win, maybe I win. They're not even looking at the numbers you play because there's no numbers. They wait until they have enough money from sowers and investors all across the world because people in every state is playing it by the thousands, by the millions. And when they have, so how you think that they, they come up with a thing, say we doing 2 million. They have already, they done made 200 million, but they'll say we're playing 2 million. If they tell you that we, we playing a, 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 a play for a, a 500 million, they already got about uh, $5.7 billion through investors. So they'll tell you we playing 500 million or something like that. But they already got about 
seven billion from people investing. So that's what the world does. Satan is a trickster. And Satan has um, counterfeited God's financial wisdom, even through having people um, operate in that ignorance. They don't know what they're doing. So just think about it. Somebody played a lottery every day for a week. They, they play playing lottery. Most likely they're going to play more than one because the devil ain't going to let you just play one. So you, you play, you're going to pick 200, about $200 in per week. Just think about it. You sold $200 to the system of Satan in hopes that you're going to win. And then the person doesn't believe in honoring God. So just think about it about it. Satan has been getting rich off of people not having a revelation of the financial Jesus. I'm showing you something. Satan will scorn the message about prosperity and wealth. And then saints, you know, you got those winky dinky preachers that be scared to be called prosperity preachers. They sissified. They, they scared of people laughing at them and talking about them. They want a good name in front of the world. They don't got no backbone. I call them Tom and Jerry. <laughs> I, call, I call them Tom and Jerry. Huh? <laughs> Huh? Tom and Jerry don't want to be called uh, a prosperity. <laughs> Tom and Jerry don't. Tom and Jerry don't want to be called no prosperity preacher. Oh, I'm not no prosperity preacher. Okay, so what you preaching failure? Cause do you know what even prosperity means? It means good success. And this, this is what the Lord told Joshua that you shall have good success. You meditate in the word. You observe to do all of it. You don't let this book of the law depart from your mouth. You shall make your way prosperous and have good success. Imagine a man saying, I don't want to be called a prosperity preacher. So that means that you don't preach the message of God. That's why the Bible said, with all your getting of wisdom, get understanding. People don't understand what they be saying. How is God looking at you from heaven saying you don't want to be called a prosperity preacher and clapping his hands? God looking at you like, okay. So you rather the world not to hate you and you go against me rather than you have me and the world hate you. You rather the praises of man than the praises of God. Oh, I'm a prosperity preacher all day long. I'm a, I'm a prosperity preacher all day long, big and strong. <laughs> I'm a prosperity preacher to, I'm, I'm a prosperity preacher to the wheels never fall off. My wheels ain't never going to fall off. <laughs> I'm a prosperity preacher all day. You turn to the left, I'm prosperity preacher. Turn to the right, I'm a prosperity preacher. I'm a prosperity preacher when I'm on the phone call. I'm a prosperity preacher where you can see me visually. I'm a be visual all this week. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be visual all this week preaching prosperity. I'm going to preach prosperity with my clothes on. I'm going to preach prosperity with my clothes on. See, you thought I was going to say clothes off. I'm a prosperity preacher all day long, big and strong. I'm a prosperity preacher in January, February, March. I'm a prosperity preacher in 2023, 2024, 2025. And saints, if you understand the prosperity thought life of God towards you, you'll recognize I have houses and lands that God wants to give me that I don't currently see. So everything that I'm sowing has an attachment of me telling the father, I now receive what you have built up in my inheritance. The Holy Ghost just says, son, you're not just a prosperity preacher. You're a prosperity teacher. You're ex explaining to my people the dynamics 
of my heart to take care of them. You see that? So I'm explaining to you the dynamics of the heart that God has to take care of you. Out of the abundance of God's heart, money cometh to you. Wow. Hey, 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 you need to post that. Out of the abundance of God's heart, money cometh to you. Out of the abundance of God's heart, supernatural money materializes in your bosom. Out of the abundance of God's heart, your body is healed from all sickness and diseases. My goodness, out of the abundance of God's heart, you can think on things that are good, lovely, just, virtuous, and of a good report. Your brain becomes anointed. Out of the abundance of God's heart, you're delivered out of all your problems. Out of the abundance of God's heart, wealth is being transferred into your hands. Out of the abundance of, your, of God's heart, you are living in houses you didn't build, vineyards you didn't plant, wells you didn't dig. Out of the abundance of God's heart, you're receiving strategies and knowledges and wisdoms and mysteries on what to do, what to say, when to do it, how to do it. Out of the abundance of God's heart, you're being delivered out of every attack and arrow that flies by day and the terror by night. Out of the abundance of God's heart. All of your diseases are healed. Your STDs are being healed. Your blood diseases are being healed. VD, <laughs> VD, is being, VD is being healed. That's old school. VD, VD is being healed. Out of the abundance of God's heart, you're receiving laughter and joy and peace and rejoicing and celebration. Out of the abundance of God's heart, your smile is bigger than it's ever been before. Your expectation is bigger than it's ever been before because it's a hope impartation. <laughs> uh, in the presence in the presence of the lord is what the fullness of joy out of the abundance of god's heart is laughter <laughs>